Hello, George. Hello, Hi, Henry. Good morning. Good, thank you. Hi, good morning. Good afternoon. Ken. Hi. I see lots of names there. And uh, where is Kelly? I think I saw Kelly join in. Wonderful. Hi, Kelly. Hi, so, Heidi. Very well. Thank you. This is amazing. I'm so excited that we finally put this together. And uh, we've gotten to that day when we get to hear from our incredible alumni who are all over the world. You have some students on the line who have joined to listen to you. Some classes have paused just for you. Nice. All right. Wow. So that's going to be exciting. Students, if you're online right now, you have any questions as we're going along, please put the questions in the chat and we will ask our panelists to answer. You also have some of your former teachers who have joined just to really? see. Wow. Yes, they are on there. So somewhere, I think former teachers, if you can remember and put something in the chat so that they, they remember you and they know that you are online. Sorry? Teach, Mr. Narti used to teach us maths, right? Ah, I don't know if Mr. Narti has joined. There's a group for no, retired saw, teaching. Oh, okay, okay, okay. It's because I yeah. saw Ken Narti, I saw it was him. Right. Oh, Ken, no, that's not that Ken. Oh, okay, okay, yeah, okay. Another okay. Ken. <laughs> another Narti. But uh, if they can please identify themselves. And hopefully there, there are some alums who have joined us also from different parts of the world. So let us know in the chat where you're joining us from. So welcome again. This is Around the World in 70 Minutes, and Phoebe is my timekeeper today. It's 1.33. We aim to do this within 70 minutes, all right? The students have to get back to class, and I know our busy alums also have work to do. Um, George, what time is it in Lebanon? It's 3.30 in the afternoon. 3.30 p.m. Okay, and Kelly, you're in Hong Kong? Yeah, that's 9.30 in the evening. 9.30 in the evening. And then, Henry, you're in the States, and it is? 9.30 in the morning. Fantastic. <laughs> you know, just hearing the three of you, it just embodies the school song. From all the countries of the, the, the earth, we come in turn to you, right? Exactly. And you guys are coming from different parts of the world. So uh, we are so grateful that you chose to join us. So, um, students, if you were listening, Henry Addo is... Uh, on here from the United States, we have Kelly Chan from Hong Kong, and we have George Saloom from Lebanon, and that is exciting. I'm super excited. So let's dig into it, all right? I'm just gonna go according to how you're displayed on my screen right now. So I have Henry um, first, and your tell us first what year, um, well, you're the class of 91, right? Did I get that right? Yeah. So Henry's I finished, class of 19. Yeah, I finished sixth form in 91. Um, 1991. Okay. 91, yes. Okay. So what's your favorite memory from GIS? Mm. Okay. The, um, there is a favorite memory that I probably won't share because it may be rebellious, but there's also a favorite memory being when I started at GIS. So my background, um, I did grow up in Scotland. Mm -hmm. Ireland. And I moved to Ghana. I was born in Ghana and I left when I was two, but I moved back to Ghana in 87. Okay. I think my favorite memory was actually coming to Ghana and seeing that um, Ghana was a very different story. But mm. GIS, a very different story than what I had experienced and heard while I was growing up. Um, in the 80s in the UK, it was a very, very different thing when you talked about Africa. And that was the height of the famine in Ethiopia. Mm, mm. So moving back, my favorite man was coming to GIS and saying, wait a minute, this is actually not what I was expecting. It was a, an experience where we had people who were worldly, who were engaged, mm. who knew more about the world than my peers did in, in the UK. And that was my favorite memory because from then on, things just got better. So yeah, that's what I was doing. Awesome. Can you tell us what you do now? Mm hmm so right now, I'm in human resources, and I head the talent acquisition function for a nonprofit in the U.S. That generally simply says I'm in charge of the hiring. Everything that okay. goes into hiring the staff, um, operations, staff, the programs, the training, the strategies, mm -hmm. whatever it takes to hire the right people in the organization. So that's my okay. role. Okay. Wonderful. And so for the students who are thinking about internships one day, right, 
they need to make a note of that so that they can connect with you. Absolutely, absolutely. Awesome. Students, you heard that. Make sure you write down his name, okay? <laughs> so moving on to Kelly. Kelly, you are class of 1994. And uh, Mr. Mposa Mensah taught you, right? I suppose so, yes. Um, yes. I forgot the class though, but uh, definitely right. the name is about. But he right. remembers... He remembers <laughs> that you revived the yearbook. Yes. Yes, that's right. Um, I'm tell going to talk a little bit more about that later, for sure. Okay, okay, <laughs> sure. So tell us what you do right now. I'm actually a, um, I work for a asset management fund. Uh, it's, in other words, it's a hedge fund. Uh, so we actually, a. Um, so my role in that, um, it's uh, trading and recruiting. So a, a bit of overlap with uh, Henry as well. Uh, okay. But in trading, what I do is I uh, basically buy and sell long and you know short and cover mostly equities. Um, mm -hmm. uh, so we do some bonds and some other assets as well, uh, but also recruiting. Since I've been with this firm for quite some time, I know its culture very well. And so I'm kind of a gatekeeper for, for, okay. for the company. Okay. So recruiting. But, okay. All right. So what's your favorite memory from GIS? Yeah, so um, I don't actually have a specific moment that kind of stand out, but I would say my my favorite moment uh, memory of, of GIS is really enjoying lunch at a canteen near the car park back in my days. I don't know whether it's that still, you know, the same place, <laughs> okay. but um, yeah, yeah, it's uh, it's usually I I think the reason why I remember it is it's typically the most relaxing part of the day when you know maybe all the classes <laughs> are done. Um, and then, by the way, they obviously serve the best chinchinga and the best wache. And That's we just right. talk about anything. You know? <laughs> yeah, we just chat about <laughs> anything. Yeah. Oh, that, good. That's good. I hope uh, it's, it's good. I think it's the same guy who was selling it when you were here. Who's still wow. here. Yeah. Wow, 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 wow. That, that's exciting. Um, and yeah. yeah, and we just chat about anything, you know, while while sitting on those lovely benches that we had. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, I, that's what I, that's my favorite, favorite memory of uh, GIS. Yeah. Wonderful. Wonderful. So George, we come to you. Yeah. Now you are <laughs> class of 92. So yes. we've had 91, 94, 92. Do you guys remember each other at all? Because you must have been here around the same time. Actually, I remember yeah. Henry quite well. Kelly okay. just sent me a photo of the yearbook where uh -huh. I'm featured, and I was like, "Wow!" Oh no! Wow! <laughs> Please send yeah. it to us. Would that, would That's love the yearbook right here. That's oh, you have it. Whoa, man! You're right. wow. <laughs> Are you serious? Whoa, whoa, whoa. That's amazing. We need a copy of that to keep for the archive. <laughs> That's wonderful. I'm sure it's probably uh, in the, maybe you have a copy in the library somewhere. <laughs> okay, we'll, we'll, we'll search for it. We have a pretty good archives department, so we'll search for it. And we'll look for all your young faces in, in, in that in <laughs> Those that were the days. Those were <laughs> the days. So George, tell us what you do well, and then your favorite memory. Okay, actually I do a couple of things. I am uh, I'm an IT guy, I'm a computer scientist by, by, by training. Mm -hmm. I uh, teach at the university. I teach them machine learning and artificial intelligence, mm -hmm. and uh, I'm also an entrepreneur. So I'm I'm on to my twelfth startup now. So sometimes I grow them, I sell them. Sometimes they fail. Sometimes mm -hmm. they don't. So uh, <laughs> and <laughs> so uh, the startup that I'm doing today, that that I'm working in today, is called I Stay. It's basically a startup to help reduce the brain drain that resulted out of the economic uh, crisis in, uh, that hit Lebanon in 2019. Mm -hmm. So uh, we do a lot of uh, offshoring or staff augmentation. So I recruit people, they become mm -hmm. employees of my company, and I contract them <laughs> to companies in the States and, and in Europe. And mm -hmm. uh, that way the people in Lebanon can stay in Lebanon, earn a decent salary, and at the same time they don't have to travel. Right. So it's it's more of a social enterprise, but it's my, it's my baby. I've been on it since uh, mm -hmm. 2020, actually, and uh, it takes about 30 or 40 percent of my time. The rest mm -hmm. is distributed between uh, my other startups and uh, teaching at the university. I love teaching. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I guess I got it from the teachers at JS. So uh, mm -hmm. a lot of times I surprise myself saying something or acting in a way <laughs> one of the one of the teachers used to do, and I like okay. okay. 
<laughs> yes, yeah. yes. And I bet at that time you used to laugh at them, right? Yeah, we do. We did. We did. We did. <laughs> <laughs> so how many startups have you started up? Uh, actually, this is my 12th startup. 12th? Yes. Wow. Uh, I had wow. three fail miserably. I lost a lot of money on them, but I, I learned okay. a lot. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was able to exit uh, four. And uh, now I'm running four more myself and one in, I'm more of a silent partner. In. Yeah, yeah. I think this is so good for the students to hear that, you know, failing at something doesn't mean you stop doing oh, it. Definitely. You pick definitely. yourself up again. You ask definitely. yourself, what are the lessons that I have learned? Uh, and then you, you start all over again. You yeah, know, and you're the thing is, you're not starting from scratch. You're starting mm. from experience. So uh, yeah. this way you get yeah. a chance to do it in a better way. And uh, right. actually so much so that I even teach entrepreneurship at one of the faculties at university because okay. it's like I want to share the experience that I went through. And uh, mm -hmm. see, when I started with with my, my first startup, there wasn't much knowledge about startups in Lebanon, at least. So mm -hmm. we didn't have uh, venture capitalists, we didn't have uh, accelerators, incubators, all of this didn't exist. So it was kind of a like new thing. And we were mm -hmm. doing everything the wrong way. So uh, I said to myself, once once I learned, because then I discovered some books and and some, some interesting authors, and once I learned, I learned the science behind it. I said, okay, I have to share that. I, I like, as I said, I like teaching. So, so sharing it also helps me understand it more. And mm -hmm. if I can help other people like do less mistakes, it would be good. Yes. So it's a win-win situation. That's great. That's great. So um, what's your favorite memory from GIS? Oh, actually hearing uh, uh, Henry and Kelly, they brought that brought up a lot of memories. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, one of the, it was a funny thing actually. So uh, one day, I don't know if it's still the same, but back then we had a, a physical belt that, that, that the, the guys would drink mm -hmm. at, at break time. Okay. And uh, I was one of them with my classmates. I'm trying to remember his name. He was from Pakistan. And uh, we decided to steal the bell. So we <laughs> hit the bell in one of the backs because the bell used to be in front of the office, in front of... Uh, You're giving uh, my children ideas, Joe. <laughs> don't do it. Don't do it, guys. <laughs> yeah, well, we, it, was, it, was, it, was, it, was, it was the craziest thing with it. And, uh, <laughs> uh, and but but on the serious side, uh, I mean the best memories were like uh, you know the, the assembly in the morning. And, uh, oops, somebody is there's a loop back somewhere. Okay, so yeah, so assembly in the morning, and uh, we'd we'd be acting plays. You know, there we would we would like choose a play and prepare for it, and and okay. and act it or put on a show or something like that. And yeah. I do remember those those moments quite well. They were they were nice. I mean, yeah. That's awesome. Um, tell me a little bit before I get to my next question. Um, we hear um, of what's happening in Lebanon and, uh, you know, we, we seem so far away from it, so far removed from it. And I just want to know, um, how is it like being there at this time? And, and what are you doing to just keep alive and sane and, and still excited about your businesses? Actually, it's that that keeps me alive and, and, and sane and, and, you know, it's, mm -hmm. it's having something to do because if you don't have anything to do and the, the fact that you're, you're, you're making a difference, you're helping people stay, you're helping people survive. And yeah. uh, that, that gives me, if you want the energy to wake up every morning and say, I'm going to work. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's, it's not an easy thing. I mean, since 2019, we had uh, a big financial crisis. A lot mm -hmm. of people lost their money, their savings in the banks Mm -hmm. And even I lost some some money in there. But uh, the thing is, I'm I'm the kind of guy who always falls down and gets up again. I don't like staying on the ground. It's mm -hmm. it's something in me. So uh, I was able to recuperate a little bit faster than others, thankfully. And uh, yeah, but I mean, it's it's not easy. It's not easy. I mean, I tell yeah. people if you can survive Lebanon in business, you can survive anywhere because yeah. you have the war every day. There's something new. Mm -hmm. uh, it's it's not I mean it's never cut and paste you know it's mm -hmm. every so looking at it from if you want it's like looking at the half filled part of the glass right. I say it's it's it breaks the monotony of life so <laughs> it's just my way of coping with it I guess yeah 
Well, thank you. Thank you so much for that. That's really inspiring. The, the students are asking questions uh, in the chat. So maybe I'll pick on a, a couple of them. Um, sure. Apart from the students in uh, the secondary school, uh, there's an IT class. So they're in the IT lab awesome. and they're listening to you. And then we have the, the junior school journalists. So they are, I think, in uh, grade four, five and six, maybe. But that's the junior school. They've got a journalism club. So Whoa. they are on. They joined us. Hello, junior school. And then the secondary school, uh, they have a newsletter. It's called The Voice. And so the journalists for the secondary school, The Voice, are also on. And they are listening to you. I so think The we Voice had, was uh, around yeah. when we were there. Sorry to interrupt. The Voice okay. was around, I think, when we were okay. there. Because I, I, the name rings a bell. I'm not sure if All it's right. the same. It's gone through a same. couple of iterations. Right, right. Uh, vibes, the vibes, 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 vibes. Yes, yes, there was a vibe. Right. So someone asked, did you run for prefectship? And Kelly said, yes, I still have the prefect badge with me. What Amen. prefect were you? And he says he's forgotten. <laughs> uh, back, back in our yeah. time, it was it was houses. So each house had a color. Yeah. I was blue. I remember I was yeah. blue. Mine was blue. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So okay. I, I was blue, blue as house. well. So yeah, we I was yellow. Have, yeah. Okay. We still have the house colors and we've added two extra. We uh, now mm -hmm. have orange house and purple house. Okay. Right? okay. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. So there's a, a question here, and maybe Henry, you can answer that for us. How has your friendship, or how have your friendships or networking helped your career? Um, I will say this, particularly today, um, networking and friendships is incredibly important. Mm. Um, so I'm not sure if you're aware, before I got into human resources, I actually had a, a business, a music business. Um, I used to manage artists, um, okay. manage tours, um, and I, and I worked on record distribution and whatnot. That was prior to getting to human resources. Um, mm -hmm. Friendships, incredibly valuable. The people that you know um, will connect you to things that are important for you in your development and your career. Um, networks, some people, use, some people use the expression, network is your net worth. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, who you are associated with, who you're connected to, mm -hmm. will take you to your next level. Yeah. Um, it works two ways for me. You network up. You network around and you network down. Always be a mentor to someone. Always be a colleague to someone else. And always look for a mentor to teach and guide you. So mm -hmm. there's three points to the network. It's incredibly yeah. important. Great. Kelly, do you want to answer that? Yeah, I think uh, I, I totally agree with that. Um, you know, I, I would say that my, my career has been really kind of uh, helped, assisted along the way by you know, both mentors and, and actually friends, right? Friends, whether, whether it's from, uh, from mm -hmm. college or from, from the workplace, um, they really help you uh, along the way. Um, as I kind of recall, you know, pretty much all my moves were due to people that I know. And um, so it's actually, it's, uh, yeah, I totally agree with what Henry just said. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's great. George, there was a question specifically for you. Um, I think you answered a little bit of it. Um, this student, Aditya, is asking, how did you manage your business, especially in Lebanon, where there was the economic recession and the current um, war, the current situation? Okay. The secret is always having plan A, plan B, and plan C, and always planning mm -hmm. ahead. Mm -hmm. And uh, see, the one thing, one thing I learned in Lebanon is no matter how much you plan, there will always be a surprise. So uh, it's... it's set your mind frame to, to, to see opportunities. So whenever mm. I see a problem, I think about it as, okay, how can I benefit from this problem? Maybe it, it, right. it can become a new startup. So mm. as you know, a startup to succeed is to offer a solution to a problem. So mm -hmm. uh, any problem that you see, instead of looking at it as a problem and then like sitting in the corner and then and crying and it's a problem, no, try to see it as an opportunity and how can I benefit from it or make someone else right. benefit from it. So uh, mm -hmm. I think it, it's, it starts with a mind frame. So once you have that mind frame in place, it mm -hmm. took me some time, actually. I wasn't born with it, you know. But uh, once mm -hmm. you have that mind frame in place, and then next step is always planning ahead. So stay informed. Try to stay one or two or three steps ahead even, okay? Mm -hmm. And always have a backup plan. And I, I think right. I, I, they, they may sound cliche, but uh, I think this is this is what, what I'm doing, actually. I'm always yeah. like trying to find... so. The, the, the current war broke out about a month ago. And even before that, 
because I have I have employees who are living in because uh, okay Lebanon is kind of divided sectarianly over like religions and stuff like that so where the bombing is happening is around seven or eight kilometers away from me okay so okay. I have I have employees who live there actually and uh, mm -hmm. some of them had their their buildings collapse but because of of forward planning I had rented apartments for for them in our area in, in the area where i'm living in which is mm -hmm. relatively peaceful and uh, basically i asked them to to move they said they will wait so uh, whenever when 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 the, the, their, their 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 building was hit they just moved to the to the apartment and basically i don't know if, if you've seen it before but it's very stressful for people to have their house destroyed and lose everything mm -hmm. in a fraction of a second mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. having a place to come and stay instead of staying because there were people that were sleeping in their cars or people that were sleeping on the roads. So having a place to come and stay helped them a lot, you know. Yeah. So this yeah. is the forward planning, forward planning that I was talking about. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, um, when you were students here at GIS, you could have never imagined what your lives would be like no. now no, at no, all. No, no. Uh, right, so that you could say, well, we're going to plan for it or, or whatever. So I want to ask each of you, and uh, starting with Henry, how did GIS prepare you for the life that you lead right now? Um, a good question. Um, and interesting enough, I actually wrote to, when I came back, um, I actually sat with Mrs. Sawyer, the principal at the time, and just said, mm -hmm. if, if not for GIS, I wouldn't be where I am. I wouldn't be sitting in front of you today. Um, uh -huh. It's a, the foundation you get at GIS is incredibly strong. Mm -hmm. Coming to the U.S. is a big shift. It's a big difference when you when being mm -hmm. educated in the U.S. and in college. Um, there's a level of independence that you have to have. Mm -hmm. but you also have to have a very, very strong foundation. Understand your identity. Understand where you came from. GIS gave me that. Um, particularly me moving back to Ghana from the U.K. Um, I, I didn't really, I'll be frank, I didn't have an identity. I didn't really know who I was. My father made that very clear. That's why he moved back to Ghana. But GIS gave me that foundation. But in terms of education, we were far ahead. When I got mm -hmm. to university, um, I was a year ahead of my classmates. So I actually placed out the first year of university because wow. how advanced GIS was. Um, that gave mm -hmm. me the education, gave me the foothold. But also GIS teaches you principles and how to think. It's a lot of times that is incredibly useful because university, they're looking to see, they're looking to train you in the ways of thinking. Um, many of the times, by the time you leave college and go into the professional world, what you learn in college isn't what you're going to use, but it's the way you think is what's valuable. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I will give GIS that. They help me think in a certain way that can be progressed. Wonderful. And I hope for Henry's teachers who are online right now, big clap, all right, for preparing him to, to think in a way that has made him successful. Kelly. How has GIS impacted your life in a meaningful way and prepared you for what you do today? Um, I'll, I'll actually now uh, kind of talk a little bit about the, the yearbook experience, right, which you kind of mentioned mm -hmm. earlier. I think okay. GIS really instilled me, you know, a strong sense of resilience, um, you know, particularly when we are embarking on something new. Um, I think George probably knows that <laughs> throughout his life. Um, but basically, like during the fifth form, um, you know, I kind of came up with this idea of making a yearbook, you know, after 15 years gap. We had like a yearbook, I think, like back in the 70s. Uh, and um, and then I, I I remember there was a lot of support that I got from uh, Mrs. Sawyer, uh, our principal back then, um, Mrs. Ribeiro was our IT teacher, Mrs. Bright was my English teacher. And also other, you know, other staff members, right? Like Vincent, I don't, I'm probably is no longer here, but he's, he was a chemistry lab assistant. And um, so we have this, all this encouragement from the teachers, but then we still face a lot of, you know, challenges and uncertainties because it was the first time that we tried to publish a yearbook without any prior experience, right? We only had like references of some samples from friends who, you know, had gone to, um, you know, study abroad and, and actually had a yearbook. Um, so we had to do, you know, uh, navigate many, many different tasks, like, you know, finding a book publisher, you know, securing sponsorships and taking like photographs and actually developing photographs because uh, there was, there was no digital cameras back then, right? We we actually have to take film camera and actually develop them in an art room. 
Um, and then additional, additionally, we had to teach ourselves like desktop publishing skills. And there wasn't there was an internet back then, right? So this you cannot really look up, you cannot Google anything, right? You just have to kind of go along with the flow. Mm -hmm. So I there think were really that sounds fun. very, very ancient to our students right now. <laughs> you know, yeah. a time so, when there wasn't Google. Yeah. So there were definitely moments when I felt like, what was this all worth it, right? Why, why am I doing all this? But, um, you know, the whole community kind of inspired me to remain, you know, steadfast and really commit to completing the task that we have. And, and as, I, as I know, I think the club continues to uh, publish the yearbook uh, since I left. And, uh, you know, this, this experience of being resilient, I think that has really stayed with me throughout my life, whether it's, uh, you know, when I'm going, relocating, you know, to a new place, uh, you know, because after moving from Ghana, I studied in the U.S. and then came back to Hong Kong. And then I also, in my career, I also transitioned um, between industries and also taking up new responsibilities at work. Um, so I think that sense of resilience, uh, I got that from GIS and and that has really carried me through throughout my life. That's amazing. So 30 years ago, you know? Yeah. That's years. right. It's been that long. <laughs> That's right. It's been that long ago. Yeah, it has. It has. It I didn't like want to it. think of it that way. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I was just calculating that as you were talking. We could say oh, class of 94, class of 90. Do you, you don't get the import. Yeah. Until you do the calculation backwards, you're like, whoa, 30 years ago, Oof. I could have been the student who's listening to me right now. Yeah, I, w I wish we had that kind of uh, interactions, you know, back then. I, I guess okay, we didn't you. have internet, we didn't have social yeah. media, but uh, yeah. yeah. Wow, wonderful. We're so, we're so blessed to have you guys on. So George, what about you? How well, has GIS impacted you? Okay, before before joining GIS, I was in uh, a French school called Ecole Française Zakra. Mm -hmm. So uh, I joined GIS, but actually I was in Form 3. That mm -hmm. was, uh, yeah, back in 84, 85, I think, something like that. And uh, joining GIS changed me radically from one person to another. So uh, I had, okay. I matured greatly between form three and, and upper six. I became a totally different guy because uh, I was I was interacting with different people, with 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 other people from other nationalities. Ecole Française Zakha was international, but it wasn't as varied and diversified as GIS was. And uh, meeting people and talking to them, and I remember I, I had friends from pretty much every kind of nationality you can imagine. And we would mm -hmm. like hang out together, have have lunches together, visit each other during the weekends, etc. And I saw how other people lived. And uh, that told me that basically there are other ways of doing things than what I know, you know? And uh, what mm -hmm. I know is not the ultimate truth. There's always something else. There's always another point of view. I guess that was the culminating point or the turning point in, in my mm -hmm. own life that made me realize that, okay, there's, there's more to it than what I'm seeing myself. Mm -hmm. So that was, that was thanks to GIS, definitely. Giving that diversity. And if anything, um, you know, I, I think one of the things that we worry about today is that the diversity may not be as much as it was when you were here, but yeah. um, it doesn't mean that we still can't learn from one another because you, you could have lots of Ghanaians, but they come from different, different places. Exactly. Right. Their experiences are different. I think what unites us these days is a certain international mindedness, right? That it doesn't matter where you come from so long as you are internationally minded. That's important. Exactly. So there's a, a couple of questions that are almost uh, along the same lines that I, I see the kids typing in. And that's, are you in touch with your old friends? They are wondering when they are as old as you, will they be in touch with your friends too? So Henry, do you want to answer that? Um, it's a thing. Hmm. It's a long time. It's thirty-three plus mm -hmm. years. And I, but I will say this: friendships change, they mature, and they and they change different ways. Some of the friends I was very very close to, I'm less close to now, but we're still in touch. I think mm -hmm. with us, the gap was the social media, internet. We didn't have that. When I went yeah. to college, we were writing letters. Mm -hmm. If we call, we call like once a month. Maybe mm -hmm. we weren't calling every day. We weren't sending text messages. We weren't having text messages. Um, so keeping in touch wasn't as frequent. It's a very different experience. 
Yeah. When the social media came back, then all of a sudden I'm connecting with people that I hadn't talked to in 20 years. But the beauty of it was when we reconnect as if we hadn't stopped talking to each other. That's yes. what true friendship's yeah. about. So mm -hmm. when we reconnected, we've been talking, we've been catching up with our kids, talking about mm -hmm. the future. So now we keep in touch. So WhatsApp is the key thing here. Um, yeah. The uh, re the reunion groups, um, all right, the class groups are very important. We have our group chats. Um, and I think we talked about, someone asked a very specific question about networking. I think, I don't know if I've addressed that properly. It helped me in my career because at a point where I needed to grow, I could reach out to someone and say, hey, this is where I am. Do you have any advice? Mm. When I was in the music business, I think the example was I was running into challenge with some of the events I was putting on. I wasn't getting the turn I was expecting. I reached out to someone I knew in my network and said, hey, give me some advice. You've been through this before. He just gave me advice. So you're giving people something that's too different for them. They need some consistency. Mm -hmm. So using my network, leveraging their expertise, the fact that they knew who I was, they knew I was coming to them in an authentic manner. So those networks are very important. That French was very important. The relationships are very important. So keeping in touch with my friends. Um, mm -hmm. I also want to say, keeping in touch with your friends, make sure it's about friendship. If it's about business, make that distinction. That's important. Mm -hmm. Very much so. Good advice. Kelly. Um, so I, I think I was a bit lucky to be just a few, like three years behind because that's the time when the internet became more popular. <laughs> so mm -hmm. uh, when I was in college, uh, it was actually quite easy for me to keep in touch with uh, uh, my, my friends because a couple of us actually were in actually in, in relatively close, like it was okay driving distance. Uh, there were a couple of us who were in, this, in the same area. So during that time we would, you know, maybe every six months or so we would actually get together. But as time going on, obviously then we we went on, uh, you know, different places, work different places. But uh, as, uh, you know, Henry mentioned, uh, you know, social media, WhatsApp group, uh, it's definitely been helpful. I still have one group, which is uh, my, I remember it, uh, it's, it's the, uh, we, I did further math back in uh, in in uh, upper seven. I'm oh, sorry, upper six, and and there was a group of th just like five, six of us. So there's that WhatsApp group of just that group, and um, we we still talk, you know, right. these things, right? And I I met just like three weeks ago. I had a rather long conversation, phone conversation with mm -hmm. uh, my classmate uh, Della Chikata. Um, he he actually works at the World Bank now in Ghana. So we were just talking about what's happening in Ghana, like how he has been. And uh, yeah, so we, we still keep in touch till, till now. Obviously not, uh, we don't do as much as before, uh, but as Henry said, uh, every time we, we talk, there's so much, so many memories come back and uh, you know, it's like as if, you know, uh, you, you, you just part of ways just yesterday, right? Just, yeah, yeah that's just how I put it. <laughs> that's beautiful. And George, are you still in touch? Yes, I am. I am definitely. Mm. Actually, I got to know about uh, this reunion from uh, a JS group on WhatsApp. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. But uh, actually, when, when I left Ghana in 92, uh, internet wasn't as, as popular or as widespread as it is today. So uh, as, as Henry was saying, we used to write each other letters. And the letter would take like two, three weeks to to, to yeah. arrive, and then you know, so it would be a month before you you could actually get get to the, the answer. Uh, we would have eventually phone calls. I remember two. I mean, two people who I I stayed in contact with the most were Santel. Santel, I think he was in Henry's class. Uh, Santel Govinda Swami, uh -huh. and uh, Robin. Robin was with us. I think. Uh, till form five and then he he left the school so robin chan and uh basically we, we 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 caught up when when facebook came out in 2007 i remember the first thing i did when i created an account i went searching for for them on 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 facebook and yeah. uh, that's how i could reconnect to most of 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 the people I remembered, the names I remembered. So I was adding friends left and right from the names I remembered. <laughs> and uh, yeah, today, thanks to, to, for example, Signal or, or WhatsApp or, or Telegram, you're able to chat with them live. So it's like you're sharing with them. And mm -hmm. one thing Henry said that that really sparked something in my head, that when when you do get reconnect, it's, mm -hmm. it's as if you left each other the day before yesterday, you know? It's mm -hmm. like you continue 
speaking or joking or even the same things that we used to say. So it was it was amazing. Yeah. <laughs> It's a precious thing, and I, I don't know whether when you're in it, you realize how fortunate you are until you leave and several years afterwards, you know. The students are still asking some questions in there. Some of them you answered. I want to uh, say, George, George, I wanted you was we mentioned the Robin Chan, right? Yeah. And his brother is Alan Chan, is that right? Yes, 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 yes. Exactly. I had dinner with him, oh, not lunch, uh, mm -hmm. two months ago in Hong Kong. Robin. Or no, Alan. his brother, Alan. Alan. Yeah, 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 yeah. He was in Hong Kong. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Whoa, whoa. Yeah, well, anyway, Robin, sorry. Robin had a kid, uh, I think, a couple of months ago. <laughs> oh, okay, fine. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it must be so um, so fun when you chat with one another. Maybe the last time you saw each other, um, you were in high school. And then you're like, I'm married. I've got kids. And I work yeah, here. Yeah, yeah, and you're yeah, like, yeah. you married? Who married you? <laughs> That kind of stuff. I, I get that with, with my classmates. Uh, I get that with my classmates as well. This is neat. Um, <laughs> some are asking you the houses that you were in. I think you said that earlier on. Um, and your favorite teachers, your favorite department. Okay, actually, there, there's there's a question by Raymond Asari. Mm -hmm. uh, if, 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 if it's okay, I would like to answer it because it's... Sure, uh, what, what's the question? Uh, can, you, can you share a challenge or a failure in your journey and how you over, overcome it? it? Mm -hmm. yeah, uh, well, actually, there were like uh, a couple. I mean, uh, I've had to restart from scratch about four times. And, mm -hmm. uh, okay, I'll, I'll skip the boring details. But uh, the thing is, overcoming it was uh, thanks to the fact that I refused to stay where I was. Mm -hmm. So uh, in life, in life, it's, I mean, failure is inevitable. You will fail at least mm -hmm. one time in anything that you do. And once you understand it's part of the process, it's part of the step-by-step -step that you are going to, 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 to take, yeah. uh, it becomes, it becomes easier. And uh, you remember that a failure is, is, is a failure if you allow it to be. Mm -hmm. so I don't know if I'm expressing it well, but then if, if, <laughs> if you consider it as a failure, you will you will definitely not do anything and you will fail you know but if you consider it as a lesson learned and for example in my, my very first startup i lost the equivalent of about nine hundred thousand wow. dollars uh yeah i was it was i mean we didn't know anything about it and we were just like we're, we're doing a startup you know and we're imitating <laughs> jeff bezos and <laughs> we thought that we were <laughs> the new kids on the block and uh well i mean i could i could have said, okay, it's devastating, I lost all my money, etc. But then, no, I mean, I looked at it, okay, that was a, a, an expensive lesson to learn, but I learned from it and I moved on, you know. So uh, failure is inevitable. I mean, I, I hardly know anybody that has never failed at least once in their life. It's how we react to it that defines it as a real failure or as a step to move forward. So I just wanted to answer Raymond. And our, our last question here, I think, George, you've you've answered it too, and I'll ask the, the, the other two, the one piece of advice that you have for current GIS students. So thank you so much uh, for pre-answering that. That's really, really helpful. Kelly, do you want to answer that as well? One piece of advice for them. I Yeah, um, actually, I wanted to talk about failures as well. I, I think um, George mentioned by any main time, but it's, embrace failures right because that's i'm not suggesting that you should avoid you know, i'm not saying that you shouldn't study so that you fail your exams I, I don't not saying that for sure but rather i want to really encourage everyone the students to to challenge themselves to the extend that you know failure becomes a possibility right so if, if we're consistently scoring like 100 percent like full marks on a test you know consider asking your teachers to to give you more complex um, questions, right? And, and, and still, because I still remember I was talking about uh, mention of Mr. Che. He was my physics teacher back then. And uh, I remember he made it a goal that the average score on his final exam has to be below 50% because he really wanted to push us, you know, you know, to a limit, right? And, and this approach was really the stark contrast to, you know, what we're seeing some, sometime, you know, these days in the US, there's something called great inflation. And that's not definitely not happening back back at our times. I think it's important that 
you know, we 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 are comfortable to fail in a safe environment. It's totally you know acceptable, especially when you are you know still in school. Um, and the same applies to extracurricular activities, right? We don't expect you to succeed on the first attempt. Uh, really embrace the process of going through multiple failures in, in quick succession because each time you fail, you learn something new and, and you you get to improve, right? I mean, George kind of mentioned that, uh, that you know already, uh, but this is you know the power of what's called rapid iteration, right? You just keep going, keep chanting out new ideas, test it out, and I'm sure that that process can make you a better person. Oh, I think you're mute. <laughs> yes, I mistakenly muted myself. I'm, I was just saying, don't give up. That's yes. the, the spirit of it. Just don't give up. Because uh, one student here has said, you know, uh, any specific teachers that shaped you, because, uh, you know, they can be strict on you. It's very challenging dealing with that. I'm facing it right now. Was it after you graduated that you became grateful for them? <laughs> I, would, I would say that. Mm -hmm. I would say you don't appreciate what you have until you wait until you don't have it right? mm -hmm. or until you need it. Let me rephrase that. You don't appreciate it until you need it. Um, one thing that JS gives you is a lot of structure. Mm -hmm. It's invaluable that you understand that it's structure, not discipline. It's not punishment. Mm -hmm. Yes. That's a framework <laughs> that you will take into your college. College, they do not tell you what to do. Mm -hmm. You have to manage that by yourself and take a lot of Capture what you're learning now mm. and ingrain that structure into your being because you don't have anyone saying this is what you have to do. You're going to wake mm -hmm. up in the morning and you will make your own decisions from mm -hmm. that day on. And it's incredibly important that you maintain the structure you've been taught at GIS. Wow. Um, I, anytime, like, and I, I agree with Kelly and George, failure will happen. We're not saying failure exams. It's not, that's not an option. It's get it done, move on. <laughs> I use the expression rest when you get there. Yeah. Um, yeah. Even when I used to play sports, we, 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 you go up to the, like you're playing soccer, you get up to the attack, and then you have to get back and defend. Teammates might rest while they're still in the attack. No, you have to get back into the position that you need to be. Once you get there, you can rest. But don't wait to, wait to, to get to where you need to be. I think my advice to any JS student, again, understand what you're getting in terms of the, the, the framework and the structure. Adopt it, ingrain it. And at the same time, once you get to college, understand there's flexibility. Failure is a lesson learned, is not a disaster. And, and when you go to college, seek out your professors, seek out someone and make yourself visible. Even if you're scoring 100% every time, as Kelly mentioned, ask for some other challenge because if they don't see you, no matter how good you are, they won't recognize you. Mm. That's very important. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Students, I hope you've heard everything. You have got um, people who've gone on ahead of you, before you. They have had similar experiences to what you're having right now. Somebody asked, is academics everything? You know, sometimes it seems like that's all we want you to do, study, 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 right? But they are here to tell you that we're, we're, we're here to support you, right? And all of these uh, teachers, who are pushing you, who sometimes don't seem like your friends and uh, or don't seem like they are supporting you. It's all for a good cause. Um, but connect, connect, connect with people in your year group. Um, you're here for a reason to be connected to one another as well as to study. Uh, so I hope you have listened to everything. Now, this is called Around the World in 70 Minutes. So we want to know if you can put in the in the chat wherever you are joining us from. Um, our students will all be uh, joining from Ghana, of course, right here from campus at the GIS campus. I wish I could hold my laptop and go around the school and show you old buildings and places that you might remember. But I'm hoping that for our 70th anniversary, which is next year, 1st of September 2025, GIS celebrates 70 years. And we'll be celebrating all year. So there's a marvelous opportunity for you to come back, come visit us, and meet the students who are on this call, right? Uh, there's somebody, Richard uh, Stumpful. Nice to see you, Henry and George. We were in the Ooh. same class. Hey, Richard. I remember Richard. 
Yeah. yeah, isn't that awesome? Whoa, that is really Please awesome. Let us know where you're. So he's Richard is joining us from London. We've got mm -hmm. some Accra Ghanas. Do we have anyone from the States joining us? Um, from other parts of Europe, from South America, Oceania, Oceana. We would mm -hmm. like to know North America. That would be great. Thank you all so much for joining. So before we say goodbye to these three amazing GIS alum, and we are so proud of you. You have no idea. I wasn't here when you were here, but I'm super proud of you. And I'm glad that you are associated with this school. Um, I would love for everyone who's on, if you're comfortable with it, turn your camera on, say a big thank you to our three panelists and say, let's say a goodbye. Let's see. Oh, and your camera on. Thank you. 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 Thank you.